So get a lot of questions through uh, my YouTube video, different social media channels, and from people that come to fish with me uh, and to learn how to use and read their sonar fish finders better. And I've been kind of putting together a list over the last couple of years. Finally kind of figured out that about the top three or four things that I really see uh, mistakes that the vast majority of anglers make. So I'm gonna go over all of those mistakes and how to fix them today so you can find and catch more fish. Now make sure you watch all the way to the end because I've got a huge mistake that the vast majority of anglers I come in contact with make that will be a game changer for your fishing. Now before I get very far into this, do not pass go. The biggest thing that you have to make sure you do is that you have a good, clean installation. You've got good electrical, wired direct to battery, you don't have any interference, you've got a good transducer install, and you've got that transducer leveled. If you don't have all of those basic check boxes ticked, you're not going to get good images most likely, or you're going to encounter problems along the way, especially with bad transducer installs or transducers that aren't leveled. I've got two videos that go all into detail about all that, what you need to do, how to fix it, everything else. So make sure you check those videos out in the description below. Now the number one issue that I encounter most often is people that don't understand scan speed and how that impacts uh, their ability to go out and find fish on their fish finder. So there's a couple of rules that you need to remember or things that you need to keep in mind. One is that you're generally gonna get the best images on 2D, DI, and side imaging scanning between one and about three or four miles an hour. If you're scanning really fast, you're not gonna get great images. And more importantly, 2E down imaging, side imaging is not made to work sitting still. You can make some little tweaks to your fish finder with the boat not moving and with experience can kind of get a general idea what's going on down below the boat, but you're not gonna get good images. You're not gonna get a lot of detail. In a lot of cases, it's not super, super helpful. So make sure you're scanning between one and three miles an hour, one and four miles an hour. And as a general rule, you want your chart speed to be equal to or slightly higher than your boat speed. So if you're driving three miles an hour scanning fish, you want that chart speed to be three, four, maybe even five, but generally not any faster than that. So chart speed matches your boat speed or just slightly higher. The other big mistake that I see a lot of people make is they don't understand how that speed impacts them. So if you're driving really slow or you're not moving or you've got that chart speed dialed all the way back as slow as it'll go, slow will make fish look much, much bigger than they really are. I can make a two pound fish look like a monster by sitting still and dialing that chart speed way back. If you're going too fast, it's gonna make fish look smaller than they really are. So that's why it's critical to make sure that you get that speed correct, scan slow and straight always scan in a straight line as much as possible without making turns. Now next is not understanding cone sizes. So most fish finders today are gonna to come with 455 kilohertz and 800 kilohertz. And then Humminbird, like I run, has mega imaging, which is a megahertz imaging. So the lower that frequency number, the wider the cone that higher that scan or transducer frequency is, the narrower that cone is. So 455 is the widest side imaging and down imaging cone you have available. 800 is more narrow than 455, and then mega, if you have that on down imaging and side imaging, is the smallest and narrowest cone. So that higher power or higher frequency like mega and 800, is generally going to give you a much more crisp and detailed image. But with that narrower cone, you sacrifice scan range. So 
when you're looking at side imaging, you're looking at a much smaller slice of the water. When you're looking at down imaging, you're looking at a much, much smaller circle on the bottom when you're using a higher frequency. Same applies with 2D sonar. 83 is a much wider cone than 200. That's why most anglers will run 83-200 at the same time because it gives you that benefit of detail and maximum coverage. So what does all this mean? Well, that sonar cone and going and locking yourself in to wanting to use those highest frequencies like mega and even 800, a lot of times you'll miss things under the water, fish, structure, anything else. Those high frequencies are great when you've got a lot of stuff going on, you've got fish laid up on structure, um, different things like that, and you really, really need that detail. But that's more of what I like to call like a sniper mode. As a general rule, you're gonna be much more effective to scan with 455 on your side imaging and down imaging. As a general rule, you're gonna be much more effective using 455 on your side imaging and down imaging, using that wider cone so you're covering more water, covering more area, and you can see more. And then, once you identify something and you wanna go in and zoom and look further, if you need to, then that's when you switch to those higher frequencies, 800 or mega imaging and really go back in and dial in that detail and rescan that area. Usually people get their fish finder, they take it out of the box, they install it, and a lot of people really don't ever get into the guts of it and mess with the settings or anything a whole lot. And color palette is a huge one. Everybody's eyes are different. And just because one color palette works better for one angler or works great for one angler, doesn't mean that it works good or is the best option for you. A lot of people run blue color palette on side imaging and down imaging. That's what a lot of fish finders come set at default out of the box. I have a really hard time seeing uh, fish in detail and structure with that blue color palette. I never use it. Very, very rarely will I switch to blue. I like to run the amber two color palette on my hummingbird fish finders because that's what works best for my eyes. But when you're out there on the water, get in there and experiment with those different color palettes and making those adjustments because you may be surprised how much difference just switching that color palette will make with your ability to see and identify fish and structure. The last one is the biggest one and that's contrast and sensitivity. I find so many anglers that just take that fish finder out of the box, they install it on their boat, they don't ever go into the settings and mess with anything, and contrast and sensitivity have got to constantly be changed throughout the day. I don't like any of the automated settings on any of the fish finders that go in and automatically adjust contrast or, or sensitivity for you. Just personally, I'm not a fan. I'm not saying that they're bad. I'm just saying that as a general rule, I think it's far more effective to go in and make those adjustments yourself. Uh, and You'll be a better angler and you'll find more fish. But contrast and sensitivity have to constantly be changed. Every time you change water depth, you change bottom hardness, um, scan range, even water clarity, it will affect that contrast and sensitivity. So you're gonna constantly need to be going in and increasing or decreasing that sensitivity and then making little slight tweaks to the contrast. But the sensitivity is the huge one. If your sensitivity is too high or it's too hot, the screen is gonna be washed out and you're not gonna be able to see fish. If the sensitivity is too low or too dark, your screen is gonna be dark and you're not gonna be able to see fish. You're gonna miss a ton. So you have to constantly go in and make adjustments. I bet you on an average day of fishing, uh, I probably at minimum adjust that contrast and sensitivity 25 to 30 times. And that's probably a very conservative estimate. I bet there are days where I easily make those adjustments 100 times or more. I'm constantly in there going and tweaking that changing the scan range on side imaging, moving it in or out based on the water depth, and changing that contrast and sensitivity on down imaging and side imaging. 
2D sonar is not quite as sensitive to having to go in and make those sensitivity adjustments as often, but down imaging and side imaging is something that you constantly have to be adjusting. If you'll go in and make sure you're making those tweaks, if the screen's too hot, turn it back. If it's too dark, turn it up, and you'll be floored with how much more you'll see going on down below the boat and how many more fish you'll catch. So that's it. Those are my top fish finder mistakes that I find that the vast majority of anglers make that I come into contact with. Um, these are huge game changing things. Once you get in and experiment with them and learn how much these different areas will impact your fishing, you will be floored with how much more you'll see on your fish finder and how much more effective you'll be as an angler. Now I want you to go down below and leave me a comment. If you've got questions about anything at all, fish finder related, anything in this video or anything at all that you've ever wanted to know, I want you to go down below, leave me a comment and let me know. I've got some other videos coming up on side imaging, down imaging, 2D, all sorts of other stuff that I've really wanted to do for a long time. So if you've got questions, I wanna make sure that I get that information covered in one of these upcoming videos. And last but not least, make sure you hit that thumbs up button and subscribe. We'll see you next time.